In this video, I'm gonna share with you the top six mistakes that I see most DocuSign users make when getting started with DocuSign. Welcome back to Sorisan's channel. It's Sofian here from Sorisan Consulting, an agency that helps businesses automating paperwork. And in today's video, I'm gonna share with you how DocuSign uh, users waste tons of time so that you can avoid this. If you all like most DocuSign beginners, you don't know what you don't know and therefore you can't use it correctly. And it's not your fault. DocuSign is huge and it has so many features that it can be overwhelming to learn them all unless someone shows you what's possible. How can you do things efficiently if you haven't learned them? And today's your lucky day because your admin life is going to change. Okay, I might be getting a little too excited here, but that's because so many DocuSign users waste tons of time because they don't know what I'm about to share with you. And by the way, all the features that I'm going to mention have been designed to save you time, money, and improve your signer's experience. If you're already a subscriber to this channel, you know that I don't share fluffy stuff. And if you're looking for ways to improving your DocuSign skills, you can download my free DocuSign Mastery Cheat Sheet that will help you get started quickly with fields and templates. You can get it using the link in the description of this video. The very first mistake that I see most DocuSign users make is not using templates. I'm always surprised by the number of users who don't use templates for all their repeat documents. I recently worked with a client who was spending 30 minutes per envelope because they had to drag and drop each field one by one every time they were sending documents. They didn't know that templates could apply all fields automatically on the documents they created in Word, regardless of the length or number of pages and even the number of signers, which would vary time to time. And after we work together, they're now able to add the fields automatically to the envelopes in just a couple of clicks. Uh, so if you are not using templates for all the repeat documents, you need to check out my videos to learn how to create templates now. Second mistake I see uh, users make is not to test their envelopes in a sandbox environment before going live with your envelopes. And if you don't test your envelopes before sending them and you are a newbie, you are definitely in trouble. Your envelopes will not work as expected in most cases uh, because even I make mistakes and I've been working with DocuSign for years now. And if you're already using, um, if you're already testing your envelopes before you send them, then that's great. But are you using your Sandbox account for that? Or are you sending your test envelopes from your normal paid DocuSign account? The reason you should use a sandbox to send your test envelopes is that you'll be sending um, envelopes that are free from the sandbox account, whereas if you're sending them from your paid DocuSign account, you're basically wasting your envelopes that you've already paid for. All the envelopes sent from your sandbox will be watermarked, but you'll be able to test that everything works correctly. To create a sandbox account, it's super easy. Just go to developer.docusign.com and follow the instructions. Now, the third biggest mistake I see users make is not using data replication. It's incredible to me how many users don't know about this feature. So for example, if you're sending documents to your signers where they need to enter their mailing address or phone number multiple times, you can create a rule that says that this particular field data will replicate automatically everywhere on the document or on your any documents on your envelope where it's needed. This allows you to create a better signing experience because your signers only need to enter the same information once and the automated rule takes care of all the boring repetitive part of um, the document completion work. So what this means for you is that you will have fewer errors in your forms and they will be completed much faster as well because you're making things easy for your signers and this is what this channel is all about. So think of a loan packet that you'd send to borrowers. They'll have to enter the same information multiple times on 20 documents. That's why we love and your signers will love data replication and you can learn more about it by watching my tutorial on data replication. Position four is data validation. Data validation is so underrated, but it's actually one of the most powerful way that you can ensure that your forms are completed correctly without any errors. So basically, the feature allows you to specify how your recipients will be entering the data in the DocuSign field. So for example, if you're asking someone to enter their email address, you'll want to validate the field with an email validation so that DocuSign won't let your signers finish the envelope if the text doesn't match an email address. So if they make a mistake, I write something like, 
um, sam at email comma com instead of dot com because they just were they were just typing quickly and didn't realize they made a mistake DocuSign will reject the entry and tell them what the problem is. And you can also create your own custom validation patterns. So for example, if DocuSign doesn't have a preset validation, you can create a validation for a routing number of, or for a, an EIN number or anything that you can think of. This is really powerful and can save a ton of time in back and forth between your clients and yourself, the sender. So without validation, you don't have control over the data. You're just sending an electronically signable form, which is better than a PDF or paper, I guess, but you have no guarantee that they will be error free. You're, you're just hoping that you'll receive the documents data that you need. But businesses who use validation rules get their forms completed very quickly without any errors while creating a better customer experience because there is no more back and forth between their team and the signers. You can learn more about uh, data validation by watching my other tutorial. And before I tell you about the rest of the mistakes that I see users make, if you're looking to implement or improve the way you're currently using DocuSign, you can find the link in the description of this video to book a strategy call with me to learn more about our consulting options. The next biggest mistake is to not use conditional logic or not take advantage of conditional logic. It's another kind of validation rule that you can use to decide what fields will be visible or hidden to your signers depending on certain conditions. So for example, let's say that you're asking the main applicant for a loan whether they have a spouse or not. If they select yes, then a box will pop up um, asking them to enter the name of the spouse. But if they select no, that same box will remain invisible. You can do this with just a field or with entire sections. The purpose is to eliminate the number of errors in your forms like validation. And if you don't add conditional logic to your fields, your signers will either need to enter something like NA in all the fields that are not relevant to them, that are required, because if you leave a box empty that is required in DocuSign, then DocuSign won't let them um, complete the signing process, or um, you're gonna need to make your fields optional. And that's another problem, because if you make the fields optional when you actually need the data um, in those fields, then you'll have to follow up with a signer at the end because you've got some missing information and that costs you more time and creates a bad customer experience. And I've also got a tutorial already that uh, shows you how to create conditional fields. The sixth biggest mistake is not combining templates to send envelopes for common setting scenarios. I hope that you already know what templates are and if that's the case, then great. But if not, you wanna check out my how to create templates, tutorials, uh, that makes more sense to you. If you do know how to use templates and you've already got some templates in your template library in DocuSign, then that's great. But did you know that you could also combine templates to send multiple documents for repeat scenarios? So for example, let's say that you are a registered investment advisor and that you've got some different sets of documents that you're sending to your different clients based on the solution that they go with. What you can do is to merge different templates together so that you can send the various sets of documents in just a few clicks uh, without having to add each document to your envelopes one by one every time you wanna send an envelope. Now, I could go on and on about all the stuff that I see DocuSize users make and how they waste time, uh, but one of the most disregarded one is PowerForm. I've done a video on power forms that explain how to use them, but I should have probably done a video on why you should use them in the first place. But basically, they act like Google Forms or any other type of forms that you can use to access uh, using a link. The main difference with other forms is that they will allow your signers to use DocuSign's electronic signatures features. So they are exactly like normal DocuSign envelopes, but they are accessible by anyone who has access to the link. So the senders don't need to send individual envelopes to recipients themselves. For example, a business lending space could make the PowerForm link to their loan application forms available to their website and also share that link with third-party brokers that they work with so that the brokers can share the link with their clients. This is amazing uh, for admin teams because they don't need to react to clients' inquiries um, to send in the envelope. It's a proactive process. You're creating the documents and or making them available to your clients somewhere before they ask. So combined with a nice marketing funnel, that can lead to uh, your signers completing the form and it's totally seamless for signers and automated. And they don't have to print the form, sign, scan, send back, 
How cool is that? The eight, let me start again. And finally, the eighth biggest mistake is to not take advantage of collecting payments. I can't believe how many businesses are not using this feature. And I think it's actually an amazing feature. You can use DocuSign to collect payments from your signers during the signing transaction. So imagine that as the signer of the contract, you could securely pay the initial deposit or just provide your banking information immediately without having to punch your credit card details into another page or having to give them to someone over the phone. How great is that experience for you? I'm just so excited about this. I think it's so cool. The beautiful thing is that DocuSign doesn't charge any fees for the transaction. So you'll just need to pay the payment gateway uh, provider of your choice. And if you live in the US or Canada or Australia, I just love Australians, I just live, I live there for five years. Uh, you have plenty of options that you can choose from, including PayPal, Stripe and Authorize.net and even more. I hope that this video inspired you to take action and improve the way you're using DocuSign. I will see you in the next one. Ciao.